Good evening, Saints. Brother John Williams here. I'm with the Ohio Chapter of Bible Believers. Uh, we just arrived here in New Orleans tonight. Uh, some of the teams here uh, now and then tomorrow and Friday. Uh, the other brothers are going to be joining us. But we showed up a little bit early uh, to do some work around the mission and get things in order. We are going to be out at Tulane University on Friday. If anybody wants to come on out, uh, we'll be out there. Uh, you can get a hold of me if you want to know the exact location. Um, but then Friday night we'll be going out to Southern Decadence. So we'll be preaching all day Saturday at Southern Decadence and also Sunday, which is game day, uh, with the parade and uh, Jackson Square. So we'll be out there. So uh, we are continuing on with the work of the ministry. Uh, Reuben uh, had an awesome pattern to follow here uh, in New Orleans. So we are continuing that work. As many of you know, uh, the ministry that he uh, was running here for about 30 years, was the vice president. Um, he left that position to me after he died. So uh, we are continuing that ministry here with Sister Jan and the workers here at JMP. And, um, you know, uh, we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, Ruben showed us how to do the job. Uh, he trained me how to deal with police. He trained me how to set up the banners. He trained me where to park, where not to park, and uh, how to have a good game plan going in. And so we've got a great team here, and we're submitting to each other in the fear of the Lord. And i um, just making this video just to touch base and say, hey, we're, we're here, and uh, we're continuing the work. And um, we are blessed to be a part of, of this ministry here. And uh, there's rumors going around that um, I'm destroying Reuben's legacy. And um, what a lie of the devil. That's what the devil would want people to believe. But... Uh, Obviously, that's a lie since we are continuing the work here in New Orleans. We're continuing the work uh, in Washington, D.C. We're continuing the work in Salt Lake City uh, and Phoenix coming up. And so everywhere that I worked with Ruben in the past, uh, for the past eight years, we started being friends in 2011. And we've worked faithfully across the whole world for the past eight years. And so the work is continuing. So the devil can say what he wants to the evil workers. But we're going to continue to work. We're not going to respond uh, to all the accusations and make a bunch of videos naming uh, people. Uh, we're just going to do the work. And hopefully uh, as people are seeking the Lord and praying and fasting and reading the word, uh, they'll be able to see um, who is actually living holy and who's actually uh, in it uh, to occupy until Jesus come and who's in it for other reasons. So we bless our haters. We bless those that curse us. We're praying for you. We want everybody to make it to heaven. We want reconciliation with everybody that loves Jesus. So if you love Jesus, we want to be reconciled with you. Uh, if you hate your brother, then, you know, you don't, you're not a Christian. So uh, anyways, at the end of this video, I'm going to put uh, Ruben's last interview and also briefing uh, from Southern Decadence, his last trip, uh, which was last September. Uh, I was able to interview him, uh, a briefing he gave, and also a um, interview with him. So I'm going to put that at the end of the video. So check out that, and please pray for us. And we'll be getting probably some live streams out there while we're here, and also some other videos. So thanks for your air support, thanks for the prayers, and God bless you all. Greetings, Saints. Welcome to New Orleans. And as you can tell behind me, this is a landscape. There's really not anything new here in New Orleans. However, this trip we came, it's the end of summer, and we labored on Labor Day weekend. What happens in this city is called uh, Southern Decadence. The name says it all. We've been preaching this event for quite some time. The unique thing is most Christians may not come here because they will say, I'm, gonna I'm not going to cast pearls before swine. Remember, we're called the haters. I still believe these people can still be saved. I still believe some of them can still be saved. Not every homosexual is a reprobate. However, uh, that, uh, that particular sin, God does call reprobate. But, you know, I still believe and have hope that some of them can be delivered out of their sodomy, which is why we continue to come. And uh, this group that we had here at, uh, at Decadence 2022, they took some abuse. They took some beatdowns. A lot of them were younger believers. We had one guy that even never came out preaching, and this was his first preach. And boy, he's got some stories to tell, probably for years. Uh, but praise God, we were able to preach it, convey a message to this uh, lost, dying city, 
and um, God was actually uh, honored. Uh, at the end of the day, they heard, they saw, even though they did whatever they did to us. Uh, we watch uh, uh, some, uh, it's going to be rainy, hot, humid. It's all that here in New Orleans. It's pretty much like their church theology. It changes every five minutes. But nevertheless, these men and women, we had Jennifer with us, stood, never complained, and uh, we, we thank you for your prayers because uh, without your prayers, it'd be very difficult to do what we do. But uh, praise God, this one is in the books once again, and uh, we hope if there is another uh, decadence that God's going to bring us out here again to at least warn them, uh, at least remind them of uh, Judgment Day. With this monkeypox, that's a big thing. Sodomites are very concerned about this virus. And we were reminding them they are a high-risk group. They didn't care too much to hear this, but uh, somebody's got to tell it. Anyway, uh, I hope you, uh, I like to say I hope you would enjoy what you're going to be watching, but you probably won't. It's going to overturn your stomach. And this is why God hates sin. God bless you. Thank you for your prayer. Please keep us in prayer. Us street preachers do get abused, and uh, it's not because we really want it. God bless you. Sodomites know that um, they can spit on you. Okay, There are some guys that may not even want to come here today because of that virus. This is a little bit at what happened in the 1980s when the AIDS virus came out. When the AIDS virus came out, a lot of people did not know how you got the AIDS disease. Was it on a spit? Is it airborne? Can you rub shoulders with somebody? Is it saliva? Every doctor was a specialist on how to get the AIDS uh, virus or how not to get the AIDS virus. Much like this monkeypox, we don't know uh, quite how it is. We just know that the homos are a high risk group. So knowing that, expect them to spit on you. Expect them to do whatever it can so that you can get it. And so uh, uh, we definitely want to keep an eye out for each other. Uh, we will watch out and make sure that nobody is going to do something beyond that. But just because you get spit, guys, we're not going to pack up and walk away. Uh, again, you got to keep the banners straight. And um, we have guys that are going to be security. If you're holding a banner, don't run to be security. we got it taken care of. You got to trust the fellow men that you're with. Uh, when you're security, doesn't mean you're a tough guy. Okay, people think, oh, but you just like to be security because you get to manhandle people. No, actually, uh, getting physical with somebody is the last resort. I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything up until that point. It's like our government. Nuclear bomb is not the first thing that we do. Uh, oftentimes, if somebody spits at, uh, say, Jennifer, you'll see me talking to the individual with my arm around his back, and we're laughing. I'm trying to defuse the situation. I'm trying to talk this guy into keep moving, okay? Not to get butt up nose to nose and to get in his face. I can do that at any given time, but that's last resort, okay? So when you see uh, some of the brothers that have been around for a while, uh, you have to trust that they're going to get in there and, and get this distraction. And all we have to do is say a couple of words, and that guy now focuses his attention on us, and we'll start backing away to get him away from you. And before you know it, we can make the guy walk away. So um, uh, sometimes when you see us just standing there, you know, geez, what is uh, David doing? He's just standing there. Trust me, David's uh, trying to defuse a fire that uh, most people don't. You have some guys that think they can work as security, and instead of pouring water on the fire, they throw gasoline, and it ignites even more. And so this is a time that you don't want to do it. We're going to be outnumbered, uh, you know, 20,000 to 1. And uh, if uh, punches start getting happening, everybody's going to be a witness that you started it. So it's good to have a camera going on. Our camera guy is going to be... Um, you know, um, undercover, and uh, John's a unique camera guy. Um, six months ago when we were in this town, some guy came with a knife, 
And, uh, you know, there was some blows. A uh, few of the brothers were bleeding. He was cut up pretty bad, too. But uh, when, he, when the officers were told he had a knife, even though the guy was cuffed, he reached in and dropped the knife. Well, John was there. He was videotaping. Okay, I've been with a lot of Christian groups that whoever has the camera, they're so busy getting involved in conversation, trying to witness. You can't do that. He stayed focused on his job. He showed the officer the knife. It was there on the floor. It came out of his pocket. And uh, that's what the camera guy is supposed to do. So if ever your job is to just video, take pictures, don't get involved in conversations. And uh, if everybody does their job correctly, we'll be out of here with our fingers and toes and hopefully don't get electrocuted in the middle of the street. <laughs> but uh, what we're going to try to do is get there, uh, preach as much as we can. This isn't like Mardi Gras where we get to leave, you know, we'd already be in the streets. Um, Bourbon Street doesn't close down until 6 o'clock. So it's still a very active street with vehicles going down the street. 